Yeah, I'll get a hold of you too about getting together uh, here in the next week when I'm coming back here in September. Okay. Well, let me know. A little get together somewhere for our, our, our people. Okay. All right. All righty. This is Highly Debatable with your boy Julius Page. I have a special, special, special guest today. The guy that recruited me, every program he touched turned to gold. Two, three years, you could, you could bet your bottom dollar in two to three years he's going to get it done. He did it at Northern Arizona. He did it at Pitt. He did it at UCLA. He did it at Mississippi State. So listen, he's saying that he's retiring. I'm not buying it. Come on. It's in his blood. He's been doing it for way too long to step away. I see. When I see it, I believe it. But none other than my guy. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's a little too. That's too easy. Let me let me tell you something else about this guy. So this is the guy who also convinced me that my athletic ability really wouldn't get me that far. And I'll tell you how he did it. So in practice, I always was a hothead. I had to talk back. He would look up at the camera and say, can you please clip this for me? Clip this for me. <laughs> okay, so I'll never forget this. And then we go watch film. And this guy says, can we please get to this clip for, of him messing this up? And he didn't use messing it up as the, as the language. He used different language during that time. And I'm watching myself mess up my help defense over and over again <laughs> as I'm arguing with him that I'm doing my job. And I learned that at that moment, that you got to be a student of this game. You got to put the time in in that film room and learn yourself and learn your opponents. But, you know, if it wasn't for this guy, I wouldn't have become that student. So it's great to welcome my guy, Coach Ben Holland. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Julius. It's great to be with you. And I have so many fond memories of you. Uh, but, hey, you were a four-year starter. You were a really good player from day one. Uh, you had so many incredible uh, you know, plays that you made that were so uh, spectacular. But when you're talking about defense, what you're talking about right now, you were one of the best defensive players I've ever coached. And you had such great pride in being a good defender and holding down. I'll never forget you holding down Darius Rice in the uh, 2002 semifinals against Miami. He had zero points and he was crying. <laughs> and he made him cry in the middle of a game and i'll never forget that i mean but you know you you locked up so many good players during your career and uh you, you were a, you know one of the most phenomenal athletes i've ever coached i mean you're you know i think of russell westbrook and julius page just being literally the two best athletes i ever coached that's a great compliment russell is my guy i love his game but speaking of those teams so it's been 20 years 20 whole years can you believe it that we brought the University of Pittsburgh its first Big East championship. What do you remember about that year? Well, I remember we were coming off a really good year. You know, the previous year was our breakthrough year, <clears throat> my third, your second. And uh, we really had a, you know, we won the conference the year before uh, on our side in the West, lost in double overtime to UConn in the finals of the Big East tournament. That we this was now our third year together. You and I are going to the Big East championship game again against UConn in a rematch, and we were not going to be denied. We had guys that were so tough mentally and physically, you know. And I, and I think about you know Brandon. I think about you, Jerron. I mean, that was a phenomenal backcourt right there. And then we had Donatus, who was about as mean as you can be, and incredibly tough. And then we started. You know, Ontario, I think, late in the year, and, and he deserved – I mean, he was our best low post scorer and really special. And we had, you know, an excellent bench of guys coming in and, and really helping us, uh, you know, be a very, very good team. I think we were top ten the whole year. We were second in the country, and if we'd won at Georgia, we'd have been number one in the non-conference back in December. But had some phenomenal wins. One, one of the great wins I remember that year – was against UConn at home late in the season when we needed one bad. And I remember Brandon throwing you a lob dunk in transition that just brought the house down. I mean, it was like so loud in the peat. It was mm -hmm. incredible. I don't know if you remember how loud that play was where 
But, you know, I go back and think about that year. I mean, we knew we were good. We had tough, hard-nosed guys. Chevy really came into his own that season. He was phenomenal. Uh, you know, Chevy Trowler, one of the best players I've coached. Uh, and we really had a great chemistry. Guy, your team was really together. You know, in other words, it made it so easy to coach when you had guys that were so together with one another and all focused on the same goal. Yeah, well, you brought up that Georgia, that Georgia game. That's that's one that uh, sticks in my memory because that was the first time my dad seen me play. Uh, do you recall what happened the day the day after that loss? Do I don't. Know. What <laughs> so you know that was a New Year's Eve uh, game right there, and we had practice the next day. Let's just say that practice wasn't too well that next day, and you kicked us out of practice. Do you remember that? I don't. <laughs> you know. I, I, uh, that team was a lot of uh, at the University of Pittsburgh, one that I will always treasure and always be thankful and grateful for. And now I remember recruiting you, Julius, out of high school, uh, coming to Buffalo and and uh, meeting your family, meeting your grandmother. And, uh, you know, it's really uh, you were one of the best recruits uh, I've ever had. And, uh, was a key to that team that won the Big East Championship. You know, we had been to the championship game three years in a row. They had never even been to the Big East Championship uh, prior to, you know, uh, my tenure. And then Jamie was there a bunch of times after that as well, including your senior year. Uh, but that year that we won, it was so special. I mean, now we win it. I'll, I'll never forget Ontario, uh, you know, fouls out of the game. We have this on video. You remember uh -huh. he flips – the cart of all those coaches. I don't know if we got Carl Krauser sitting there, and Carl was a great player, mm -hmm. uh, phenomenal player. Love Carl Krauser and what he did for pit basketball. But it got all over him. He didn't even move. He didn't even play. He <laughs> just said it all right there. I mean, Carl, I mean, he, he was only worried about one thing, winning that game. Absolutely. He, he, uh, he was really, really – I mean, talk about a guy coming off your branch, Carl Krauser. I mean, yeah. He, Oh, we were good. So uh, th those are really fun memories. Well, but I, I would tell you this too, you know, that that was something that's incredibly special. And I'll never forget your dunk over Ruben Boonjay Boonjay, <laughs> your freshman year. Yeah. Georgetown's number nine in the country. They're 16 and zero. We're down by, you know, eight, nine points. All of a sudden you come flying down. Someone hits you down the middle, and you have a dunk of all dunks. Still one of the top dunks in the history of college basketball, and probably yeah. the, history of the game in general. I mean, if you Google it, it's right there on YouTube. One of the greatest dunks ever. And I never thought I'd see that happen. That dunk made us win that game. Our your teammates got so fired up. They yes, had they such great belief in what we were doing that we won that game. That was so fun, man. Uh, you had a phenomenal career. You, your team was so good each and every year. We got better. And, uh, you know, I'm just grateful and, and uh, thankful to have been a part of it. Yeah, it was a great run. So let me ask you this. You know, that speaking of that stage in the Big East and bringing that home in our third consecutive championship game, you know, how did that feel from a coaching standpoint? I mean, you going against, you know, the Jim Calhouns and the Bayheims and the, just the Big East in New York City. How does that feel from your position as a coach, making sure your team is ready? And just how, how do you feel in that moment? Well, you know what? I mean, when you're in the moment, you're just focused on, you know, the, the little things you do in your routine. But when, when I reflect upon it, you know, in the off season or even reflect upon it now, it's it's pretty special. And, and uh, you know, I remember I had my son and my nephew there and, they were yelling and screaming at the UConn fans, having such fun, talking smack in the stands. I mean, and our Pitt fans were so excited. I was just so happy for our fan base uh, and for basketball, just how, you know, beautiful that was. To have so many people from Pittsburgh come to New York, get to the championship game, and win the championship. And I remember, you know, after the game, you know, I uh, just laid low and, I think I went and got some uh, some deli food and just hung out in my room. Felt so good, and I knew we'd get, you know, a pretty good seating. Uh, I was disappointed we should have played that year up in Albany, New York, 
in the uh, you know in the in the second you know the third and fourth games close to your hometown. We kind of got messed up on that deal, but uh, we really had a good team, I and mean, we were one of the best teams in the country. And uh, to have to play Marquette in Minneapolis two hours from their home turf was really not fair to our team. Yeah, that was tough. That was definitely tough. So I have a couple of questions okay. from your former players. I have one from Yuri Demetrius. The banker. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm so proud of him. I'm really proud of Yuri and, and what he's done with his life. He's smart. Uh, I understand he's done a very good job in the banking world and just really happy for him. But give me Yuri's question. Yuri wants to know, do you think if you would have stayed at Pitt, could you have taken the team to the Final Four? Yes, we would have gone to the Final Four. Okay, it's an easy it's question. A, it's an easy answer. I've thought about it a lot. You know, I went to the Final Four when I went to my next stop at UCLA three times. But we we had the ability, and in, in we, we were going to get to the Final Four. It might have been. You know, it always haunts me a little bit uh, to think about that. You know, my big motivation for coming back out west was my mom and dad were getting older. You know, UCLA is an hour and a half from my parents' home. <clears throat> and then after I took the job, six weeks after my dad passed away, you know, really, uh, you know, tough deal. So um, it, as it worked out, you know, I uh, was close to my mom there. And she's still, she's here in Santa Barbara where I live now and uh, is 89 and, and hanging in. Wow. That's great. She's almost 90 out here. Almost 90. Yeah, she's, uh, we want to see her get to 100. Good for her. Yeah. And last question is from your boy, Dan Stramowski. Okay. He wants to know how you feel about the NIL and the transfer portal and just the new landscape of college basketball. I think it just makes it much more difficult, especially the, uh, the you know, the, the transfer part, you know, that everybody, you know, as soon as you, you're not happy in any way, you know, they're basically encouraging kids to just, change and go somewhere else you know i mean you see that in aau basketball where a kid will play for three different teams in one summer uh, but that wasn't meant to carry over to college i mean you know the most important thing is still to get your education mm. and to, and to put down some roots so you can get relationships that are meaningful for you as a student athlete and then also meaningful for life after basketball i mean i look at you you know 20 years later here you are in pittsburgh Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you, you're a real well-known person there in that town because of all you accomplished. And uh, if you bounced to three different schools in four years, none of that would be possible. Uh, so I, I, I think it's sad. I, I think it's really uh, unfortunate that, uh, you know, that, that, you know, transfer portal thing is, is uh, so prevalent now. What about the NIL? See, I, I kind of <laughs> like it because a player like me, with the headbands, I would have made a killing out there. <laughs> I would have made a killing. Do you think that's, that's a good thing? I do. I think that there's no question that football and men's basketball players deserve uh, to get, you know, a piece of the pie. I mean, you know, those TV contracts are huge. And you're seeing now, I just read the other day, the Big Ten's going to get $1.2 billion a year for football and, and – uh, and then basketball, you know, it's the second. There's only two sports that make money typically, in, in uh, and so those players need to be compensated. And, and when you get into all the other issues surrounding it, and uh, it, it becomes a little more difficult. But in reality, you know, if it's going to be run like a business, run like a business, take care of those players. And uh, you know, the, the, right now there's really a lot of uncertainty as to how it's going on. I mean, uh, you know, what's happening, but. No question. Uh, the, the kids that are playing the games that, that are, uh, you know, stars and, and uh, they, they should be compensated and, uh, you know, so that they don't have any worries uh, for anything when they're in college. I agree. I agree. All right, Coach, one last question. I'm going to let you enjoy that beach view that you got back there. I'm jealous of. Okay. All right. So your coaching staff, I think, was special. I think everybody brought something different to the table and I, I wouldn't be doing justice to the guys behind the scenes. I know the players is between the lines, but the Pat Sandals and the Barry Rorsons, those guys, Jamie Dixon, 
I think they brought a lot to the table for you. Can you just elaborate a little bit on those guys? Yeah, you know, you're only a product of the people that you work with as a head coach. And I was an assistant coach for 13 years. I was really blessed to have such, you know, good men and good mentors for our players, along with good coaches, really good people in Jamie, Slice, Pat. I mean, we had good people that uh, were, were excellent, uh, both on and off the floor, and really cared about the kids in our program and the families of our players and, and it's something that you know, I've still stayed in touch with all of them. In fact, Pat Sandel started a new job down at University of San Diego with Steve Lavin. And uh, you know, Slice had a really tough accident this past year down in Florida. He's lucky to be alive. I mean, his son almost got run over by a car sitting outside a restaurant. Uh, but he, he's yeah, doing about it. And uh, obviously, Jamie's had a phenomenal career, both at Pitt and now at TCU, and they're going to be a top 20 team this year. Uh, but, you know, all those guys uh, are really – and like that, I think about, like, Tony Salisi, our trainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you know how much I love Tony. And, and Terrible. Al, you know, very good trainer. I mean, Tony was, you know, the best trainer I've ever had in 40 years of Division One basketball. So – and, it's, and then I'll be honest with you, Steve Peterson, our athletic director, was phenomenal. I mean, the Peterson Event Center was really, you know, his push to make the facilities at Pitt so much better uh, than they were when he arrived. And that's one of the reasons that Pitt was, you know, invited to the ACC because they had good enough facilities finally. Uh, so there was a lot of good leadership, starting with Chancellor Nordenberg, a lot of great people that were, you know, a big reason why we had success in men's basketball and athletics overall. All right, Coach, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. I'm not buying that you – this is in your DNA. I'm not buying that you dump ever. I, I feel like you're going to kick back for a couple of years, but you'll be back sometime soon. What do you think? Well, you never say never. So we'll see what happens, but uh, I'm pretty happy to be uh, in Santa Barbara right now. I, I must admit, I've got you know my son Adam. He's an assistant district attorney here in town. He's married with four little boys, our, our grandchildren. Our daughter Meredith is a a uh, oncolo- pediatric oncology nurse down at UCLA. She takes care of kids who have cancer, so she's making a huge difference in people's lives. So we're close to our family. My mom's right here. Uh, it's, it's good, but, uh, I'm going to be coming back to Pittsburgh. Actually, I'm doing a, uh, coaches versus cancer fundraiser, September 21st. And I hope that people will come out and be a part of that and support it because, uh, we've, everyone has been touched, uh, unfortunately by cancer, you know, with loved ones that we've had, that we've lost. And, uh, so, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you, though, when I'm in town and getting together with some of the fellas. So, uh, I'm going to rally some of the guys. I'm going to rally some of the guys, see who's in town. we got to get together. Good. Well, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I'll host. So. All righty. <laughs> All right. I appreciate you, Coach. It was great talking to you, and I thank you for your time, sir. All right, Julius. You take care, man. All right. You too. Bye-bye.